In today's video, we will cover programming a four or five axis machine in SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. I've opened the part inside of SOLIDWORKS and I've actually programmed this part in CAMWORKS 2023. So this is in part mode and you can see I've got four different setups. I've also got my machine set up to rotate in the Y direction. And you can actually see the rotation direction here based on what I've selected in the machine. So if I look at my machine, I've got a four axis machine selected. In my setup tab, I've got indexing set to four axis and my rotary axis limit set up here. And then in the rotary axis tab, I have it rotating about the Y axis. If we look at that, you'll notice that we've got tool paths on mill part setup one and mill part setup two where that Y axis actually wouldn't be able to reach. So we're just rotating in this direction. So we actually wouldn't be able to create any tool paths on either end of this part. So where I like to program four and five axis parts is inside of an assembly. So I'll show you how this is done, how you can start from scratch, or we can also import something that's already been programmed in part mode. And I can also show you some of the benefits to using assembly mode for fourth and fifth axis programming. We're going to go ahead and say file, make assembly from part, and we'll open this part inside of an assembly. So I'll drop the part in the center here. So you can see in my assembly, I've now got my part. If I come back into CAMWORKS, we need to define a few different features in order to program this in assembly mode. So if I look at the machine first and I choose edit definition, if I choose my machine, so I'm going to choose the fourth axis machine, choose my four axis post, and then in the setup tab, you can see there's four axis as my indexing, my rotary axis limits, and a few other options in here based on the machine selection. And I've also got my rotary axis tab here. Now in the rotary axis tab, you can actually see that I can't choose my rotary axis right now. And that's because I haven't actually set up my coordinate system. I'm going to do that first. And again, I did set the coordinate system inside of part mode. So I can actually link to that where I like to create the coordinate system as a SOLIDWORKS feature. So I'm going to come back into my assembly, choose reference geometry and coordinate system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this SOLIDWORKS feature and I'm going to click on the coordinate system from within my part mode that I've already created. So once I've got that selected, I just make sure that everything's in the correct direction. So I actually want my Z axis to go this direction here. So I've got my X, my Y and my Z direction. So choose OK. And now I've got that coordinate system created. So I can call this coordinate system one, or maybe this is coordinate system for my first program. And I'll go ahead and I'll set up that coordinate system. So choose edit definition on my coordinate system and I'll choose the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. So I just have to click on, there's my coordinate system program one and choose okay. So the next thing I can do is I'll come back into the machine and under the setup tab, we've still got four axis. My rotary tab, you can now see I can choose Y axis. So there I'm rotating about my Y and I'll choose okay. So there's my coordinate system. And with assembly mode, what we need to do is we can actually tell the software what part we're programming. In assembly mode, we can essentially bring in our fixtures. We can bring in any CAD model of any part of the machine, the fixture, the table, whatever we need. But we need to tell the software what we want to program with CAM. So I'm going to right click on the part manager and choose manage parts. And I'm just going to click on the part that I want to machine. So it lists that part in here and I can choose OK. If there were multiple parts, again, I would choose all of the parts I want to machine in that program. So the parts now listed under the part manager for access part. I can also right click on that part and choose import part data. So because I've already programmed this part in part mode, I can actually import the part data and that's all of the tool paths and any kind of machining features that have been associated with that part. 
So when you look at the imported part data, you can actually see there's only two setups. The reason why it hasn't added in all four setups is because our machine can't reach setup one and setup two if it's rotating about the Y based on the coordinate system we've selected. So if it's holding the part on the bottom here and it's rotating about the Y, we can't actually cut either end of this part. We can only cut the sides. So you can see that mill part setup one and two are still there. They're just pink. So this is why I chose my coordinate system as program one, because what we can actually do is we can make a secondary configuration of this part with a different coordinate system and we can say that that's program two. And that would be the program that creates the tool paths on either end of the part that we can't reach right now. So we'd rotate the part and then have it rotate in a different direction. So I can go ahead and copy the configuration or I can create a new configuration if I right click there. So I'll go ahead and just copy this configuration. And then if I double click on the configuration, and again, you can rename these as well. So one might be program one, one might be program two. Program two. And change this one to program one to match our coordinate systems. So again, I need to create a new coordinate system. So I come back into my assembly, choose reference geometry and coordinate system. And in this case, I can just choose the existing coordinate system and then we'll just change the direction. Once I've got that set, I'll choose OK. And now I've got coordinate system two. And this I'm going to change to program two. And again, we need to link that to our camworks. So come back in here. And again, I would just change the coordinate system. So here's our coordinate system. Choose edit definition. And now I'm going to use program two. Once I do that, you can actually see it's going to bring in the setups that I can now program based on my new direction. So we've got now setup three, which would be this side and setup four, which would be this side. So if they are pink, that just means that they need to be regenerated. We can go ahead and choose generate operation plan and generate tool path. Another option would be to start from scratch if we wanted to get those tool paths back. Um, and just import those again. If I switch back to program one, you can see again, we've got setup one and setup two, which are these sides. And then if we double click on program two, we've got the other two setups. So it's all still in one file. It's just using configurations for different programs. The next thing I'll show is inside the operations tree, we just want to generate the tool paths to give them a refresh. So they've imported all of the same tool paths that we programmed inside of part mode, but these ones we just need to regenerate so that they um, get a refresh in the new program. Here's my setup one and setup two. And again, we can right click on those setups and choose edit definition to get our origin information. So based on the fixture coordinate system, our axis, again, based on the fixture coordinate system. And the last thing being the offset and indexing. So inside of our offset, if we want this to be a G54 for, and this is setup one, we can choose a sign and see G54. And then again, our indexing, if we want to choose the rotations, if we want to go in the positive direction, I can press select and so on, or we can let the program decide. I can choose okay. And you can see there's my G54. And again, if I come back into setup two, and I can set this to G55 and make sure we press assign and then press OK. There's my 55. So another thing I want to point out inside of assembly mode is if we right click on the machine inside of our operations tree, actually see for sort operations, we have three different options that you can see inside of assembly mode. So in part mode, we have two different options to so sort by operation type or by tool and then by whatever you want. So again, or whatever you didn't choose in the first one. So operation type, and then we would apply and that would sort the tool paths. So you can kind of see how they're sorted on the left-hand side. Well, what we now have inside of assembly mode is we have the strategy is either by setup, 
So that's basically just using your sort operations that you use inside of part mode. Or we have the across setups and then we have by and across setups. So across setups is what we're actually going to want to use to limit tool changes. Um, so basically what it would do is um, take the same tool and it's going to cut both sides. It's going to use a rotation in between and it'll allow us to rotate the part to still use the same tool but on the opposite side. If we use the by and across setups, it will use that tool change limitation but it will also use the sort tab from part mode. So this allows us to use by and across setups and again we have across setup direction, same or alter alternating and we also have a setup change option. If we look inside the help menu inside of Camworks here, you can see there's an option here called process tab. And this will actually allow us to see different examples of the strategies. So you can see the goal of the buy and across strategy is similar to across setups, except that the operations within each setup will be sorted according to the buy setup rules first and then sort across setups instead. And then this obviously explains the across setups and your across setup direction. So same or alternating and then different options again um, on top of that if we wanted to adjust. Another nice thing that we have inside of this sort operations is the ability to preview this before we choose the OK button. So we can always press apply, see what it looks like, whether that's exactly what we're looking for. But if it's not, we can always press undo change something and then choose apply and choose that. Once we press OK, it is now sorted um, and you can actually see that all of the setups are linked together. So again, setup two, setup two, these are all going to be my uh, G55 setups and then the setup ones would be my G54. You can drag and reorder these in whichever direction that you want, um, but the, set, the sorting is automatically done. Um, within the machine. The tool paths can also be dragged to the different setups. Again, because they are the same setup direction, um, they can be dragged to those same setups. So I can drag any setup two to any setup two group um, and same with the setup one. So the benefit of programming inside of assembly mode is we can create different configurations of our programs. And that allows us to create as many different programs inside of one file. But again, it's limiting us to the abilities of our machine. So this is a really great option for safety purposes, as well as programming purposes and organization. We can also take advantage of the different sorting parameters and use different automatic sorting features from our sort method. So again, right click on the machine and choose sort operations and we have the different process strategies that we can sort by. If you have any questions, please contact us by emailing support at cadmicro.com. Thank you.